who were who was it that created the earth and the heavens um according to the bible um because again yeah i know the church that i um where my membership was um at um we have a book the fundamental beliefs and in that book imad we we were taught that there were three beings involved or three persons involved and that also is confusing on on its own in its own right whether it's three beings or three persons but nevertheless it states that there were three involved in creation three involved now yes. i i i because up to now we've seen two from the verses that we've read what does the bible say regarding creation who was involved with creation okay good question allow me to share the bible again um here we go this is the verse that uh, uh, people build on to say, you know, there's a three, there's a, there's a trinity, and and they Genesis chapter one verse twenty six, and God said, let us make man in our image, and they say, well, you know, us in Hebrew is more than two. It's not just two; it's more than two. Well, one, I don't think so. That's not in the scriptures. The scriptures prove. Otherwise, prove the opposite, right? But if we just allow the scriptures to interpret itself, forget what we think, forget what any theologian thinks, just let the scriptures interpret itself. In creation, we have God speaking and saying, let us. He could be speaking to one person. He could be speaking to two people. He could be speaking to a hundred people. We don't know. Let's allow the Bible to give us the answer, right? I think that would be the only logical thing. So the first point, that you need to keep in mind is whoever God was speaking to shared the exact image of God. Because the verse says, let us make man in our image. So obviously, whoever God was speaking to shared the same image as him as himself, right? I can't speak to, to a monkey and say, well, let us make a, a, a toy in our image. Well, it can't be in our image. I mean, you're a monkey, I'm a human being, right? Well, are we going to make it walking on four or walking on two, right? Uh, maybe if we put a monkey on the side, so no evolutionists will say, I can't talk to a cow and say that, right? Uh, yeah. So whoever God was speaking to shared the image of God. Now, here's the thing. If you search the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, you will only find one other being that is referred to as the express image of God. And that is, I believe, in Hebrews chapter 1, uh, verse 3. Talking about the Son of God has in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. This is the only being in the whole scriptures that is referred to as the express image of God. No other being. No third being is referred to as the express image of God. We are made in his image, but we are not his express image. Are you with me? So whoever was involved in the work creation had to share the image of God. And according to the scriptures, there is only one other being who is the express image of God. And that is his son, Jesus Christ. Nowhere, and I repeat, nowhere are we told that there is a third being called God, the Holy Spirit, who is the express image of God. Nowhere. So... Going by this verse alone, we have to exclude any other being other than Jesus in that council where God spoke to someone else. And I believe it was to his son. God spoke to his son and said, let us make man in our image. Maybe, just maybe. That's why when God made man, God and his son, rather, let us, God and his son made man in their image. Maybe that's why they created two. Not three, not four, not just one. Created two. Adam and his Eve. And, and the story of creation, how they were created, I mean, that's a whole session on its own, is very interesting. It's very telling of who was creating. I mean, you have creating one first and then putting that one to sleep and taking a rib out of him. And it's interesting that the Bible does not use, does not say that God created Eve. Um, it says that God Builded Eve. Um, um, I know where it is in my physical Bible. Uh, 
2.22. Notice what it says. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto him. Notice what it is in the original language. Made he. That word, can you see there, that little square, Virgil? Is it coming out on the screen? Yes. Yes? <clears throat> if you can read it, it's a primitive root. It means to build. So, even in, in, in the language that is used, God doesn't say he created a, the woman. He says he builded the woman. It's very interesting that one was created and then another one was taken out of him, out of the existing material, and they were both equal. Is it possible? Because the, Jesus, the son, came out of the father. He was brought out of the father. The father was first. First, the son came out of him. And they were both equal in nature. Anyway, that's a side note. So that's one point. Whoever was involved in creation had to be the express image of God. And the scripture clearly says there's only one. There is a son. So this tells us two beings. Now, if you keep that in mind also, if we jump to Proverbs 8, we won't read it because we've just been through it. It clearly tells us <laughs> that in verse 30, when creation took place, the speaker, the, the person who's speaking says, then I, then, or in creation, in the beginning, I, whoever that person is, referred to as wisdom, I believe it's the son of God, I was by him, by God, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him, right? So the Old Testament tells us there was someone with God when creation took place. Now, if you jump to chapter 30 of the same book, and verse 4, notice what we read. Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the winds in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? That's creation language. What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. So in the same book in Proverbs, we, we have uh, the words of Agar, the son, uh, uh, the son of Jekka. He's a, he's a prophet. He's attributing creation to two beings, and he's identifying them by relationship, a father and a son. So when we go back to, to chapter 8 and verse 30, then, in the beginning creation, I, who's the I? Chapter 30 tells us, it's a son, was by him. Who's the him? It is God, the father. So when God said, let us make man in our image, it is rather obvious from the scriptures that God was speaking to his son and he said, let us make man in our image, the father and the son. That is why, that is why the New Testament over and over and over again tells us the following. Notice what it says. Ephesians chapter three. There are many verses. I'll just share a couple. Verse nine. Notice what it says. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So God created the world by his son, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter one says the same thing. God, who in sundry time and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament is so clear, telling us plainly that God created the world through his son. God is one being, the father created the world through his son, another being. Two beings are involved in the work of creation. Uh, if you are thinking, and I'm sure you'll be thinking that, that in Genesis it says, and the spirit of God hovered upon the face uh, uh, of the deep, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, and the spirit of God moved upon the face uh, of the waters. We've already dealt with this in the previous session, uh, even in just the first few minutes of the previous session, we dealt with it. But in short, uh, the Bible clearly makes a, a, a strong link when talking about creation uh, it, it equates the spirit of God with the breath of God. You can see that in Job chapter 33 and verse 4. The spirit of God has made me and the breath 
of the Almighty has given me life. When talking about creation, it equates the spirit of God that hovers upon the deep with the breath of the Almighty. And then in Psalms 33, it says in verse 6, it equates the word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of, the, of them by the breath of his mouth. It equates the breath of God with the word of God. So putting it together, the spirit of God is equated with the breath of God, which is equated with the word of God. If you remember, the Bible says that God spake, and it was. As I'm speaking, air or my breath is coming out. So the spirit hovered upon the face of the deep or of the water is simply referring to the word of God, the breath of God as God spoke. I don't understand it. No human being does how God will speak and things will appear. But as his, his breath passed, as his voice, his word passed on top of the earth, as he spoke, things came into existence. That's all what it means. It doesn't mean there is a third being called God, the Holy Spirit. So in short, creation is attributed to two beings. God created the world through his son. Sorry, I'm taking long. It's an interesting topic. Go ahead, Virgil. No, no, it's, it's very necessary. Um, you've actually now just taken us to that verse, for, uh, Genesis 1-2. Explain to us nicely. And in essence, you would agree, um, Imar, that that is probably the only verse that those who claim that there's a third being uh, that's the only verse that they really that, and obviously the one you started with Genesis 126. But there's a plethora of evidence that it was too involved in creation. And once those verses that you've just spoken about, Genesis 1, 2, are understood in context with the corresponding verses, then there's no misunderstanding, there's no anomaly, it is clear. And uh, I praise God for this truth. So as I understand now, as you've explained, it is God the Father who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. But this he accomplished through his son, Jesus Christ. So in essence, they are two involved. The one gives the mandate or the instruction and the son uh, uh, follows it through or at least um, carries out the work. And again, this is why we said at the start, Imad, that First Corinthians 8.6 is, is important because it gives us that um, the, the way by which God operates. Maybe just just link quickly creation and, and the way you've explained it now was 1 Corinthians 8, 6. You don't have to go to the verse because we know what you've seen it. Okay. But if you can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 very good uh, link, uh, Virgil, there. Uh, as we said, that God created the world through his son. We saw that in the Old Testament. We saw that in the New Testament. And, and uh, in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, it says, But unto us there is but one God, of whom are all things. Uh, that, that word, of whom, it's, it's describing the source. It is describing the source of all creation. I'll put it up on the screen, makes it easier. Of whom are all things. So the Father is the source of the power. The Father is the source of creation. And he's the source of all other things, as we will see as we continue in the study. The Father is the source, but then it says, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. So one is the source, the other one is the by, is a, is, a, is a channel or is the avenue through which all things were made. So uh, imagine, uh, I don't, not a perfect illustration, but let's say I want to build a house. I'm not a builder. I have the resources. I have the money. I give it to a builder. And the builder uses my money to buy the material and he puts it together and he builds a house. Now, who built the house? Well, the builder did the work, but I also built the house because I paid for it. I provided everything, right? It's not a perfect illustration, but it gives us an idea on how creation took, took place. The father is the source of all things, but Jesus is the one <clears throat> who put these things together, who spoke those things into existence.